Diablo Immortal is far and away the best large-scale mobile game I have ever played. Gorgeous visuals and a fantastic combat system set an incredibly high bar for developers to hit if they want to make a similarly great, deep experience for phones and tablets. There's just a single caveat, the microtransactions. During our review period, all microtransactions were disabled. The battle pass didn't work, the marketplace was shut. All of those elements are going to make up for a significant portion of players' experience with Immortal when it launches fully, and will drastically change my opinions on the game if any of those components are mishandled, of which there is a potentially high likelihood. Outside of that giant asterisk, the fundamentals of Diablo Immortal absolutely need to be experienced by both diehards of the franchise and newcomers alike. Set between Diablo 2 and 3, Immortal sees a player's fully customizable character trek across the map for shards of the World Stone, which have fallen into the clutches of several diabolical demons. It's pretty standard fare for a Diablo game, but to have that standard of world building and storytelling at your literal fingertips is a delight. Every character is fully voiced, which brings fantastic personality to the experience. That being said, there were a few instances where a character's audio didn't play. Hopefully bugs like that are worked out in the full release. Diablo Immortal is a fantastic looking game. While the textures of course don't rival what is possible on the latest consoles or a high-end gaming PC, it's pretty staggering how excellent everything looks and runs, especially when the action gets hot and heavy. The particular standouts for me were the in-game physics, such as the movement of a character's clothing, as well as the lighting, the soft glow of a torch reflecting off a puddle along a stone pathway. The Mortal's visuals bring incredible life to the game. I did, however, play the game on both an iPhone 13 Pro and an M1 iPad Pro, the latest releases from Apple, so your mileage may vary if you're on an older device. The game on iOS supports devices as old as the iPhone 6S, as long as it's running iOS 11 or later. Also, we were unable to go hands-on with the beta version of the game on PC, so we currently have no idea how those two experiences compare. The standout of the Diablo Immortal experience has to be the combat, which is deftly integrated into the mobile format, and is far and away the most fun gameplay has ever been in a Diablo game. I had so much fun, and continue to have so much fun, battling waves of monsters, both with touch controls and dedicated control accessories like the Backbone and the Razor Kishi. During early access, I played as the Monk Fighter, which, as you can imagine, is all about close combat. What's fantastic about Diablo Immortal is the way in which its attacks integrate with one another. The Monk has an ability to draw in a bunch of enemies around them. There is then an attack to follow that one up, where the Monk disappears for a brief moment and several spirit versions of them will attack the group of enemies from all sides. The combination of these attacks can not only quickly clear out a whole horde of enemies, but never get old to use. And these are just two of the many skills the character can unlock, all of which are designed to play to their strengths as well as blend with one another. I didn't test any other characters during Early Access, but a friend I was speaking with who was also playing had a similar experience with the Wizard, whom they described as having an ability that could line up a bunch of enemies in front of them before deploying a laser attack that could strike them all down in one shot. I cannot wait to get my hands on the other characters to see what kind of skills and abilities they have. While I didn't reach the end game of Diablo Immortal in my time during a review, which is clearly being set up as the main course to the campaign's appetizer, I did get hints of that replayability during my time in Early Access. The Elder and Challenge Rifts provide consistent, procedurally generated trials that give players reasons to go back and unlock new gear, climb leaderboards, and other incentives to continually return to the game. Immortal is also an MMO, so it has random timed events that spring up in the world. While I was unable to dive into extensive multiplayer with the limited pool of testers during early access, I did get hints of that experience here and there, with random players showing up in my game from time to time. It only made me more excited to jump into the full experience upon release, as the taste of it that I got during early access already proved 
that the formula goes with Diablo like peanut butter and jelly. My biggest issue with Immortal is that it's not all that challenging. Even when facing down the campaign's most fearsome foes, at no point did I worry that I would perish, neglecting to avoid attacks in favor of doing as much damage as quickly as possible. Knowing that I would speedily replenish my health flasks or the villain would drop health orbs for me to consume. I imagine that the difficulty will increase as I near the end game, especially as it can be changed when the player hits max level, but the initial experience provides little to no challenge. Diablo Immortal is a must play and I think it will end up as one of my favorite games of the year. As someone who is usually turned off by the nature of many large scale mobile games, I am amazed how drawn I am to this experience and only hope that the microtransaction element, when implemented, is executed well and feels complementary to the game rather than dominating. We shall see what happens in that regard, but for now I cannot recommend testing out Diablo Immortal for yourself enough. <laughs>